Want to know how to make your vehicle more fuel efficient? Find out in this episode of Stuff You Should Know, brought to you by Bank of America, where you can earn more cash back for the things you buy most with the Bank AmeriCard Cash Rewards Credit Card. Hey Chuck. Hey buddy. Have you seen these newfangled electric cars? Yeah, you plug them in to a wall socket. Yeah. It's pretty neat. It makes them electric, right? Well, I, I, I kid, yeah. I joke, sure. because I know that you've seen electric cars, because electric cars are kind of uh, obviously here to stay. I would say at this point, my friend, they are entrenched, and the reason why is because they finally, like, they've got it down pat. They're a viable alternative to regular old gas guzzling cars. Yeah, and uh, they, they, because they'll get you from point A to point B. Sure. There's some sporty models out there. And then the most attractive part of it is because they don't use internal combustion engines, because they use electricity to power their motors. That's right. They don't put out any CO2. But at every step of the electric car's evolution and progression, yeah. it's been kind of dogged with ideas that maybe it's not such a green alternative to an internal combustion car after all. Yeah, I think uh, when you see articles that poo-poo the carbon footprint of the electric car, mm -hmm. I think they're just trying to get details out to people that, you know, while you plug it in and you're not burning fuel, there's still a CO2 footprint attached to that car. Right, so, so let's dig into this, okay? All right. The first place, the most obvious place we should start is, what is the carbon footprint of your tailpipe emissions of an electric car, mm -hmm. the answer is zero. Zero. From the tailpipe. Now it's true that uh, hybrid cars, which use gas and electricity, they do have some tailpipe emissions. Sure. But with just an all electric plug-in vehicle, mm -hmm. the tailpipe emissions equal zero. And the reason why is because they don't burn gas. Yeah. And since you don't burn gas, you don't have any CO2 to emit. So bang, boom, argument over. Like, why, why hasn't this been laid to rest years ago? Yeah, check mark for the tailpipe emissions. Yeah, so why, what are people talking about then? It's not just about what's coming out of the tailpipe, because the cost of manufacturing a car, you're going to get some uh, carbon emissions. Oh, I always forget about manufacturing. Factories, employees driving to and from the factory. Yeah, that makes sense. In their gas guzzling cars. Yeah, I guess transporting the materials to put them all together. Yeah. All of that stuff burns CO2. That's or right. Burns gas, which emits CO2. You have some stats though, don't you, on manufacturing CO2 footprints of a gas car versus an electric car, right? Any vehicle that's, that's produced, whether it's internal combustion or electric, does have uh, CO2 emissions from its manufacturer. Yeah. But, Compared to, say, an internal combustion car, which about 17% of its lifetime CO2 emissions comes from its manufacturer, with an electric car, it can be as high as 39%. Yeah. That's a really high number, and as a matter of fact, that comes from a single outlier study. The more accepted numbers are anywhere from 15 to 26% of a, an electric vehicle's lifetime CO2 emissions come from its manufacturer. Yeah, and the reason why is because uh, the batteries. Right. When you're making these lithium batteries to power these cars, it's gonna add up. You know, the, where they source these things are often from uh, faraway places, mm -hmm. and there's a lot of uh, shipping that needs to go on, whether it's train or right. literally ships. Right, and then plus mining the stuff you need to make these lithium batteries is very, um, CO2 intensive. Yeah. So yes, the batteries definitely contribute to the overall CO2 emissions for the life of the car. Definitely counts against it. Yeah. You're plugging in a car to the wall, right. which is great. It's running on electricity. And electricity, it's like, what? That's like, it's fine. There's no CO2 with that. No, that's not true, Josh. <laughs> You're being coy. I am. So that electricity comes from somewhere. It has to be generated somehow. And depending on where you live, could be a little friendlier than others, but let's say you live where your electricity is generated by coal. Oh, so say like you live in West Virginia or India. Yeah. Well, here's the thing. If, you're, if your electricity is generated by coal, that means that power company's burning a lot of coal to heat up some water, to yep. create steam, to run a turbine, which turns a rod, which moves an electromagnet, which generates electricity. It's magic. Right, so all that coal that's being burned is emitting CO2, yes, it is. which again counts against the car, because after all, it's the car that's using that electricity that's being generated by that coal. So that contributes to the CO2 emissions. Yeah, but 
let's say you live where it's hydroelectric mm -hmm. or Geez, what about even solar power? Yeah. If so, you're making your own. Like if you live in Idaho or Paraguay, sure. where there's a lot of hydro, or yeah, you're at home making your own electricity, that definitely lowers the amount of CO2 emissions over the car's lifetime. That's right. Uh, and then there's some other things that you have to take into account too, Chuck. Like what? Well, like um, not all uh, plugs or sockets are 100% efficient. That's As a true. matter of fact, I don't think any of them are. Yeah. And then some lose more uh, electricity than others right. during transfer. So you might be using a lot more electricity that's being generated by coal than you're actually using. That can count against it. True. But if your car has a very long range, and you get a lot of miles out of a single charge, yeah. then it's going to lower the overall lifetime CO2 emissions because sure. it requires less ultimately. Yeah, and you know, if you're gonna keep that car for 10 or 12 years, then that number is gonna shrink. It's called amortization. Exactly. In this case of your CO2 footprint. Right, and so overall, basically when you compare uh, apples to apples, yes. and you take a conventional uh, c internal combustion car, yeah. you compare it to a specific model of electric car, Yes. you can't really come up with any universal number that says this one's better than this because there's so many factors involved. If, yeah. if you take those two cars and compare them in one city and then compare them in another city, you're going to come up with different numbers. Yeah, and there's all kinds of conflicting studies still. I think the important thing to remember is that overall the electric car is going to be a good thing in the long run right. as the energy grid itself gets greener mm -hmm. then the electric car itself is going to get greener and that carbon footprint is going to shrink even more yeah so this this neck and neck horse race that internal combustion and electric cars are at yeah. is not going to be neck and neck for much longer as the grid gets greener nope so there you have it there's no universal answer but you know my opinion i want an electric car that's my dirty secret you do want one yeah it's like driving around a golf cart <laughs> it is. It's quiet. Nice fancy golf cart. Yeah. Well, let's go uh, shopping for one right now. All right. Okay. Oh, and here's another way to get the most out of your next fill-up. The Bank of America card cash rewards credit card from Bank of America. You earn more cash back for the things you buy most, including 3% cash back on gas for the first $1,500 in combined grocery store and gas purchases each quarter. So now you know how you could get the most miles and cash back on every gallon of gas you buy.